Hello, hello. Let's find out how to make a tab to menu for Unreal Engine. I'll go over the functionality and usefulness of widget switchers, as well as size boxes, horizontal boxes, and vertical boxes. We'll take a look at an example menu I've made beforehand. I'll talk you through what I did and information about each component. Then I'll make a new one on the spot to show you the process. With that said, let's get started and look at that uh, example. That's not the right button. Here it is. Um, these buttons over here are the tabs. And then this empty space is where the widget switcher is. Currently, it is attached to a transparent image. If I click the second button, it changes to a normal image. Uh, there's an image with animations to show you you can do animations. This one has a different animation that uh, shrinks the width of the image a little bit, or the entire widget switcher, in fact. As you can see, it kind of stretches out there. Uh, this one show you you can make unique borders for this, that it's not just a box. And this here's a like actual options menu. None of this has any functionality. It's purely for a uh, show. So, um. Let's go look at the blueprint and see how it works. All right, here we are. You can see that there's only three main objects here. We have this tiny little button to close it. We have the widget switcher and this vertical box. This vertical box um, has a number of size boxes, which have a number of buttons in them. What the vertical box does is align all of the components attached to it top to bottom. You see it's just a straight line here. The um, size box is here for the shape that I want these buttons to have. See if I turn on this height override, it gets smaller. This is the default size that the vertical box wants everything inside of it to be. But the size box, which has the button inside of it, can override the vertical box and you can customize your buttons. So the size box is there for, you know, making sure things are the right size because putting uh, components inside other components can mess you up. The widget switcher itself is kind of like a second canvas slot. There, I have, what, six things here attached to the widget switcher. I have that image, the transparent image, the image, the one with the animation. So each of these components is assigned an index based on the order they are in this little uh, hierarchy panel. And the first one is zero. The next one would be one. The next one would be two, three, four, five. You can see if I go to the widget switcher, it's at zero initially. If I try to go lower, it'll set it back to the lowest. If I try to go higher, it'll set it back to the highest. So how is the widget switcher working with the scripting? Each of these buttons over here, and eh, these buttons, I have a click event, unclicked event, that gets the widget switcher and changes the active widget index, which I just uh, named each here. You could attach this to a variable, as you can see. Uh, I didn't do that here. And then the rest of these is just like for the animations. Back in the designer mode, unfortunately, I haven't gotten the size box to work with the widget switcher. Uh, this It can't override it. I've tried here. As you can see, it's not making any sort of effect. Uh, I tried it with the size box, tried it with the border, tried it with both, as you can see. It doesn't work. What I opted for instead was an animation that will fix that, as you can see there. With all the information out of the way, let's go make a new menu to test the widget switcher ourselves. So go to your content drawer, right click, go to user interface, and down to widget blueprint. Select user widget and it'll create you your widget blueprint. Let's name this one menu because other one's test. And then we'll open that up. So, as you always do with a widget meant to be for menus, let's switch up the canvas panel, place that in, and let's grab our switcher as well. Let me change the size and anchors for this real quick. 
And there we go. I've left some room at the top for some tabs. And for those tabs, we're going to get a horizontal box this time instead of the vertical box. What this horizontal box does is the same as the vertical box, but instead of top to bottom, it's side by side. So let's um, do some positioning here. There we go. And let's bring in some buttons. Uh, I skipped over the positioning there because it's up to your own design what you want to do with it. I'm not going to show you. Let's name this uh, just a normal button, I guess. As you can see, this is very small. And over here on the button, I have no option for its size. So let's go grab one of those size boxes. So we can control that size, put the button inside the size box, and we'll do a width override. See, so I made it smaller, I can make it larger. Let's set it to 300. I think there should be enough room for five buttons here. In fact, let's copy this, paste it a few times, and there are our buttons. I'm going to place that test menu with our new menu so we can test it out in the game. There it is. Nothing in the way to switch, obviously, but we have our buttons that do nothing. So let's go back and fill out our widget switcher. Currently, it's just set to active index zero because there is no indexes. If we add one, it'll stay there. But uh, let's get some images in and I'll just uh, put some random ones out. Copy and pasting. <laughs> and let me just change the colors of these red random. Okay, there they all are. As you can see, now we can set that index to 4 because there are 5 indexes and it starts at 0, so 4 is our max. And if we go test it again, well, still not working because we haven't set the code in. To get that code, go to the graph mode, I'll highlight one of your buttons, get the on clicked event. Get a reference to your widget switcher. And then we're going to drag out of here in search of set active widget index, not widget, set the index. And we want to get the function of it. There we go. That one should work and set it to zero. So I'm going to uh, repeat this process a few times with all of the buttons. And I'll see you again once I've completed doing that. All right, here we are. But of course, make sure you set the index to what you need it to be. You don't want to get some random thing that isn't going to help you. There we go. And that should have the widget switcher in working condition. Let's uh, oh, test it right now. And there we go. It's changing to what it needs to be. So of course, you can customize these buttons. You can customize this. You can have it so when these are hovered, it changes the widget switcher. Up to you, whatever you need it to be. But that's basically the extent of it. I would recommend putting a border as the first object if you want to make some shape. Uh, is this the right one? Yeah, this is the right one. I have this border that's the, the little circular shape here and an image that's the uh, square shape in here. But this border is what allows me to use those size boxes to, uh, you know, adjust this one. But that's all there is to it. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope this helps.